Hello, everyone, and good afternoon to everybody that's here and everyone on Zoom. Welcome. Today uh, is a very special day as we gather to celebrate the amazing life, wonderful work of Dr. Barbara Brenner. It's ter terrific to see all of you here and so many people representing so many facets of Barbara's work, especially centered here at Sinai and in our community. My own journey with Barbara actually starts with her husband, Bob Rosengard. So I worked with Bob when I was a resident, started my residency here at Sinai and was doing rotations at Elmhurst and Bob was working there. He taught me so much what it was like to work with vulnerable and oppressed populations at that time. So fast forward about seven years. Shortly after I became medical director for the general internal medicine practice here at, I, at IMA at Sinai, I was asked to become a provider member for the community advisory board for the school and the hospital. So I joined and it is where I met Barbara. We decided to meet after our first meeting when I was on the board and see how I could work with her on community outreach to the local East Harlem community. At our meeting, she said, quote, cause I've always remembered this, my husband remembers you from when you worked with him at Elmhurst. So she told me it was Bob Rosengard and I remembered him fondly. I remember thinking after our meeting, what Barbara must be like if she was married to Bob from my experience with him. Wow, was I in store for a lot. I had no idea what I was in store for in knowing, working and learning from Barbara Brenner. We went, we went on to work um, together for the next decade, along with others in this room, um, to provide health care, education, and medical care to the East and Central Harlem communities. During that time, Barbara mentored me in community advocacy and social justice, and continued to do so even after she retired. So we all have our stories and memories of Barbara, and today is a day we will celebrate all of them. So as my journey started with Bob, I would like to now introduce Bob Rosegard to start our program. Bob. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm looking out at all these uh, people I know, some of whom I, I can make a speech about their careers that are so wonderful. Uh, but I'll get right into it. A big thank you to Maida and everyone who created this event. I'm going to be talking mainly about her work in community, community relations, but she loved working in environmental, uh, community environmental medicine. Also, as I don't believe in what we used to call the great man theory of history, uh, Barbara needed support to have accomplished what she did. People that she, that repeatedly came up in conversations are Gary Rosenberg, who is Director of Social Service, Pat Levinson, the late Pat Levinson, who was on the Board of Trustees, Richard Roberts, who was her boss for a while, and the late James Modibo Baker, a wonderful political activist and community organizer who she was lucky enough to hire and who taught her a lot, according to her. Barb would have turned 81 this month, and she was born in a show business family in Beverly Hills which is the name of the southernmost neighborhood in Chicago. And her mother was a very beautiful uh, ballet dancer who married <clears throat> the uh, head stagehand who was a few inches shorter than her uh, and somewhat of a roughneck. He boxed for a hobby and he wore he had a pair of brass knuckles that he used to help prevent the stagehands union from uh, being taken over by the mob. Uh, and she, uh, she, this was at the, at the Schubert Theater and she enjoyed recalling that age nine, she saw the 1951 revival of South Pacific 35 times <laughs> from backstage. Actors her age were sometimes brought to play with her on their days off. In 1960, she graduated as a member of the National Honor Society, going on to earn a liberal arts degree at Purdue. And as was the thing to do back then, she joined a sorority, Phi Mu, 
which she was very embarrassed to recall, had a black lawn jockey and an annual plantation ball. She also came to believe that if certain of her sorority sisters had known that although raised as a Methodist, she had a Jewish father, she might have been rejected by FIMU. And I want to assure you that uh, Purdue has changed for the better. I don't, uh, around 1967, she earned her master's in history at the University of Chicago. Her department head, William H. McNeil, who at at 99 received the, at age 99, received the National Humanities Medal from President Obama and whose book, Plagues and Civilization, was a pioneering work in the social impact of disease, said to Barbara, you qualify for our doctoral program, but our policy is no financial aid for women. I mean, because obviously it would be a waste. You're only going to fall in love, get married, and drop out. Then became, began years of exploration, teaching high school social studies on Long Island, getting into the addiction services field, directing a Bronx methadone maintenance program, deciding in her own words that she didn't know what she was doing, and deciding to correct that in 1975 by entering Hunter Social Work School, studying administration and community organizing. For her second year internship, internship, Gary Rosenberg told me that though he absolutely wanted nothing to do with supervising a social work intern, Professor Harold Weissman of Hunter convinced him that being this brilliant woman's field instructor would be a rewarding experience. And when she graduated, Gary immediately hired her onto his staff, jumping to 1985. There were two things you could say about Mount Sinai. It was a great hospital wanting to be greater and more to the point of our gathering, the residents of East Harlem in general did not feel welcome here. At that time, if a hospital wanted to expand, they had to get, they had to get state approval of what was called a quote, certificate of need. Dr. David Axelrod, the state commissioner of health said basically, if you want state approval to expand, you have to improve your relationship with East Harlem. It fell upon Gary Rosenberg to set up the community relations department and he picked Barbara as its first director. Now I wanna take a detour here to talk about Barbara's impact on the social work profession because she really identified as a social worker and even said that her work in community and, environment, and environmental medicine was driven by her, quote, social work values. So right after completing her public health doctorate, in the middle of running community relations, our close friend Bob Schachter, executive director of the local NA, uh, National Association of Social Workers chapter, suggested that she run for chapter president for the 1994 to 96 term, which she did successfully. At that time, social workers doing psychotherapy in private practice were not licensed and therefore ineligible for third party payments. Psychiatrists and social workers and psychiatrists and, and psychologists benefiting from the lack of competition had a strong anti work, anti social work lobby in Albany. Barbara realized that social workers needed political allies and got the idea of forming an alliance with the leadership of the powerful union local 1199 to overcome the opposition. Bob Schachter and subsequent chapter presidents carried that alliance forward, leading to the passage of the social work licensing bill in 2002. On October 2008, wow, I'm at the end. <laughs> Barbara moved to community, the year that Barbara moved to community and preventive medicine, Barbara and the late Carmen Milagros Villegas, a famous East Harlem community organizer, were honored for their work promoting affordable housing. Each of the honorees were given time to speak, and to my amazement, because I had never known about Carmen Villegas before, she spent most of her time praising Barbara Remind, which reminded me of a line of Jewish scripture, which I will translate as, 
as what kind of a person deserves honor? The person who honors others. Carmen Viegas ended her talk with the following words. Barbara Brenner is the reason that the people of East Harlem consider Mount Sinai to be their hospital. Thank you all for honoring Barbara. Hi, everyone. So we'll be getting started with our presenters, and I will be moderating. And I'd like to, for our first presenter, um, welcome Ellen Alpert, Linkage House board member. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Sorry. Good afternoon, all. Um, my name is Ellen Alpert, and I'm honored to pay tribute to my longtime friend, colleague, and mentor, Dr. Barbara Brenner. I'm here today representing Lincoln House, for which Barbara and I served on the board of directors for many, many years. Our board chair, Judy Howe, would have loved to have been here today, but unfortunately, she is traveling for work. I first met Barbara in 1984 maybe it was 85, when I was working for Manhattan Borough President David Dinkins, and she was a director of community relations at Mount Sinai. I guess I met her after that because she was the, uh, she started in 85, so it was might have been 86. Our first collaboration was trying to develop an AIDS nursing home in Harlem, right, in the epicenter um, of, the, of the illness and the crisis, really and it required several years of work together. Barbara and I really bonded over this experience. It was very difficult, um, but at the end, we were able to identify a site, um, got the support of the community, and were ready to move ahead. Um, but unfortunately, well, both fortunately, the AIDS crisis had changed so that you no longer needed an AIDS skilled nursing facility. Um, so, but we, because we bonded that way, and had worked together for so long, she asked me to come work for her at Mount Sinai after the Dingens administration uh, was concluded in 1994, actually. Um, and I worked for her uh, to develop Project Linkage. Barbara and Judy were the creative force behind uh, Linkage House, um, and they, hold on. Um, the partnership was actually very unique. It was Mount Sinai spearheading the collaboration with three non-for-profits for, from East Harlem, the church next to the site, Emmanuel Baptist Church, Union Settlement, and the East Harlem Triangle led by Alice Cornegay, if anyone remembers Alice. Um, for those not familiar with Linkage House, it's a 70-unit independent residence for low-income older adults located on East 118th Street between 1st and 2nd Ave. And this year, it is celebrating its 25th anniversary. So I want to give us a big applause, and Barbara, a big applause for that. Um, the concept of linkage drove the planning with a vision to link older adults with social and health services, the community, and younger generations. Barbara and Judy wrote several grants, which were integral to getting seed money for the planning of project linkage through UJA Federation and New York Community Trust. Barbara was also instrumental in creating the social services program at Linkage House and fought tirelessly to make sure there was a full-time social worker on the staff. She took the lead in writing a proposal to the Mount Sinai Auxiliary Board to fund the social worker, which they did for two years until the position was paid by the federal government. Barbara served as a mentor and continuous support to the social worker at Linkage House. And the social worker is here today, Alma Colazzo. I am so I'm thrilled that she's here. And she has many stories about her relationship with Barbara for many, many years. Everyone knows about Barbara's commitment to things she believed in and her passion to improve the quality of life of others in need. Linkage House was very much her baby 
and she put her heart and soul into making it a safe and supportive environment for those who live there. As both long longtime colleagues of Linkage House and as her friends, Judy and I will forever be grateful to Barbara for her leadership, focus, vision, and passion for helping others. Over the years, Barbara, Judy, and I celebrating, and maybe some of you in the audience did as well, celebrated many holiday meals with the Linkage House residents and staff, serving Thanksgiving meals, picking out raffle tickets um, from the jar that Alma had for gifts and passing out those gifts at holiday time. She truly loved the community she served. All of us, the Linkage Board, the staff and residents, miss her greatly, and you are forever in my heart, Barbara. I love you. Thank you. And now I'd like to um, welcome Getty Arniella. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I just I want to say that I'm so humbled to be here to speak about Barbara, who was a mentor. I knew I was going to cry. <laughs> it's just um, we didn't have an opportunity to mourn her after she passed last year. And um, so this is a very special occasion. Um, many years ago, I think it was like in 1994, I remember leaving like the social work grand rounds that were over in the 1425 building and many colleagues were hustling toward a barely visible Barbara. Um, and I learned that she was the president of New York State NASW. I was in awe of her and um, I quickly learned that she was a, a role model that I aspired to be like. I never got to know her when I worked here at Sinai, but years later, our paths crossed uh, at numerous community meetings and, and committees that we were serving on together. And little by little, I realized that she was someone I needed to know, someone who had so much I could learn from. Uh, she was a huge force in the social justice environment and the most dedicated community advocate, intimately involved in improving the health of the East Harlem community. And everyone knew her, you know, and they all felt that she was someone who was always going to be at their side. And Barbara seemed to know everyone as well, right? And um, she was always so generous uh, with her time and her knowledge and always willing to help in any situation. The community knew that they could ask her for help with anything at all. And she always came through for them. Um, and if she didn't have an answer, she knew who to go to <laughs> to ask for help to help the community members. So she never let anybody down. I think Barbara saw potential in me, which I'm eternally grateful for. Um, and she introduced me to Dr. Carol Horowitz, um, who was beginning a community-based participatory research project. Um, and so our longstanding relationship began. I just continued to absorb everything that she generously um, shared with me and patiently explaining and helping me to grow. Uh, you know, I'm a Bronx girl, so this was a whole new environment for me. Um, but Barbara mentored so many of us that, um, you know, that many of us are here today, but um, that we all are carrying on her legacy of combating health inequities in our black and brown communities. Um, I'll leave you with a short story. So as head of community relations here at Sinai, Barbara was planning a huge health fair during Harlem week, which is like incredibly busy and, you know, thousands of people go to. And I was working at North General Hospital. Um, and so we were working together. We, we were going to help her with this um, to reach community members about the importance of health screenings. And we were keenly aware, first and foremost, that there was a rise in prostate cancer. And second, we knew that men, you know, they were really scared to get screened. Um, Barbara somehow <laughs> enlisted one of the top urologists here 
at Sinai to come to the Harlem YMCA and provide these screenings for the men of Harlem. I mean, I, I was just flabbergasted that she was able to accomplish this. And we were able to screen so many men on that day. Um, so, you know, we miss her terribly and we hope that we can do right by her in continuing her legacy. We're forever grateful. Thank you. I'd like to welcome next Ray Lopez, the Chief Program Officer from Little Sisters of the Assumption Family Health Service. Good afternoon, everybody. So nice to see some familiar faces. Um, thank you all for being here and for, for asking me to, to share. Uh, and hi, everyone. Uh, watching on Zoom. Um, so I'm, I'm a resident of, of East Harlem and uh, I've served my community for 21 years and Barbara is a very influential uh, person um, who I worked with over the years. Um, you know, I recall a very early meeting with her uh, and her team at Linkage House uh, over on 118th Street. I was invited to learn uh, about the Growing Up in East Harlem uh, project. And, you know, a project that, that at the time was uh, focused on disseminating information to the community about using safer cleaning products in the home. Um, you know, the, for me, that was my first introduction and, and the, the project was just instantly appealing to me because it provided very simple uh, recipes with the, uh, affordable ingredients, and um, and you know also just the way that Barbara and her team uh, shared the information and spoke about the project uh, it just really struck me. Uh, they spoke about community members already having an awareness of this information uh, from their parents and grandparents, but that they just you know people needed reinforcement that an encouragement and confirmation that these products uh, work just as well, if not better than, than, than these uh, you know, traditional store, store bought cleaning products. And I, that sort of strengths-based approach uh, really resonated with me. And, um, and with time, you know, I realized that you know, it was because it aligned uh, so well with, uh, with our mission and, and values at Little Sisters. Uh, you know, and Little Sisters, we practice mutuality in our relationships with families and staff. You know, we re respect, learn from, and depend on each other. Uh, we accept people without judgment and seeing the dignity in everyone. And we recognize strengths and capacities and expertise of, of each person. And the relationships are based in, in the principles of trust and equality and dialogue rather than power over one over the other. And so, you know, I saw that instantly and, uh, and you know, it, it attracted me to, to build relationships with, with her and the, the people that she trusted uh, within Mount Sinai. Um, I worked with Barbara on a few other projects, but one in particular uh, was more than 10 years ago and it was focused on, on the bed bug epidemic. And it was during this project that I, I grew closer to Barbara and learned many lessons that have shaped my career uh, in community and public health. Uh, she approached me to partner on this bed bug project and she was clear to me that the reason she wanted to do this project was because she wanted to recognize um, the exceptional level of, of care that, that we provided at Little Sisters. Uh, to help families manage uh, such a stressful and demoralizing condition that was not easy to admit and to seek help for. Uh, she also wanted to raise awareness on the issue and to provide collective community voice to those uh, you know, in the wider public. Um, every aspect of the project, it was a, a master class in how to execute a, a true community academic partnership. 
Barbara always treated me and my team of community health workers uh, and the participating community members uh, with mutuality. Her approach was to treat us as experts and peers. Along the way, she taught me how to advocate for, the, for my community and organization when engaging other academic institutions in, in similar kinds of studies. This helped me to better discern quality partnerships and build deeper relationships uh, within Mount Sinai and other organizations, and to always strive to include community members in the process as early and as often as possible. 2022 was a difficult year uh, for a lot of us. Uh, and for me, is that because I lost uh, two of, of my most influential um, mentors, Barbara Brenner and Sister Suzanne LaChapelle. Uh, a few months ago before Sister Suzanne's passing on Christmas Day, uh, she shared a few words about Barbara uh, that I'd like to share with you. Um, Barbara was so good to me for months when I first arrived in East Harlem, so attentive to help make connections with people and institutions that could be supportive and helpful to Little Sisters with the Assumption Family Health Service. She taught me so much about community health needs and the value of being part of a larger system to bring about change and enlarge services the value of collaboration and how to work in partnership on many levels. She was a wonderful mentor to me, teaching me and staff so much about community public health needs and service. And she carried this through her board participation at Little Sisters over many years. She had, much, she had such clarity about the issues that were worth the battle. I'm forever grateful for her concern, sharing and teaching over these recent decades her work is done. I'm sure she's participating in a meeting in heaven. <laughs> Gratefully, Suzanne. So much of what Barbara stood for uh, is present in me and in, in many of the colleagues who had the honor of working with her. I'm truly grateful to have crossed paths with her and I'm confident that together we'll continue to build towards reducing these health disparities in East Harlem, a community that Barbara loved and served. Thank you. I'd like to welcome next Reverend Mimsy Robinson, Associate Pastor of Bethel Gospel Assembly. Good afternoon, everyone. I am tempted, and I think I'm going to go with it and say, let the church say amen to everything we've heard. So amen, amen, amen. Truly, I can say it's an honor to stand here and speak of my friend, Barbara Brenner. And I say to you all, good afternoon. Um, Pastor Mimsy Robinson, as you've already heard. Um, Bob, what a pleasure to meet you. And thank you for making me smile while we were taking that picture by talking about your hair today. So <laughs> it looks lovely, just for the record. <laughs> we appreciate you, and I, I just feel the love. And that's my, my opening here. This is a community of faith because this was a woman who inspired faith, who encouraged people, and who bought the best out of people. And so it's, it's, it's so easy for those of us who um, do this kind of stuff often, standing before people, to talk when we really feel <laughs> that person. Like, you know, do you feel me? Yeah, I feel her. I feel her because she touched lives. Her life mattered. And she made sure that you knew that your life mattered. And that made her very, very special. And that's not something you forget, but I, I do acknowledge that there's mourning. You know, so often we, in our desire to get people to be happy, even as ministers, you know, we, we kind of rush people out of the mourning. Bible says, blessed are they that mourn. They shall be comforted. So may God comfort you, Bob, family, and this Mount Sinai family. May comfort go out to all of you. May peace go out to all of you. May strength be given to you, even as you remember her, even as you think about all that she is and was and see i don't know 
who loves Raymond. I don't know who hates Chris, but I know everyone loves Barbara. So come on, I'm gonna ask you to do something I sometimes do during memorial services like this. You might not get a chance to come up here, all right? But all of us can give God a standing ovation for a life that was well lived. Why don't you stand up and just thank God for her life for a moment. Just give a, a standing ovation for a life well lived. For a life of impact. And I know you're standing at home or in your office, those of you who are Zooming in. And so I met Barbara through the Mount Sinai Community Advisory Board. I was asked by one of the members, um, who was a neighbor of mine, to join that board. And, you know, again, I enjoyed being a part of the board. But upon meeting Barbara, I was invited to join a community advisory board in the community, which again intrigued me when she told me how it was structured because basically she told me that we together would decide, it's the same one that Getty was talking about earlier, we together would decide what issue in health in East Harlem we would work together on trying to resolve. And I said, what? <laughs> I gotta see this, right? And so that's where our relationship started. And I can tell you, again, knowing that she is the person who is the first director of community relations, I know why. She was the perfect fit for it. She absolutely was knowledgeable, culturally aware, street smart, <laughs> caring. She was, as already has been stated on some level, a medical justice pioneer who quietly helped chart a new path for hospital and community relations, and even public health research for that matter. Dr. Barbara Brenner's life mattered. She, met, she left a mark on, I think everyone's heart. Everyone who met her, everyone who knew her, knew that she was special. Barbara was always pleasant, friendly. Come on, you see the smile. She's got a smile that absolutely could light up a room. Um, she was the kind of person who the late Congressman John Lewis would say was always looking for good trouble. <laughs> One day, again, as I said, she pulled me into that good trouble and what we formed together, and some of you are Crispin's here, Getty's here, others are here. I think, Peggy, we were part of that too. Others here, Sandra, so many who I'm looking at, you know, who became friends through that experience, we formed uh, Project HEAD, which is also known as the East Harlem Partnership for Diabetes Prevention. And again, she was a key player. And I remember going to a conference with her. Again, and it, let me just say something about that project. That project spawned others. That's the interesting thing about it. And it's the reason I've, I've stayed involved with community, uh, the community advisory board here, as well as gotten involved in a number of other things largely because of that one. As a result of that one, you had Communities Impact Diabetes, you had Teen Heat that still exists and is still funded, and you know that's a big deal after all these years. That said, so many things have come out of that, including things that have impacted my life. Barbara was a friend, but she was also a mentor. She was imposing, she was not imposing, but always inspiring, always willing to listen, always willing to hear what you've got to say and valuing your words. And I simply say, um, you know, she's a woman who loved her work. She's a woman who loved people, but through my conversations with her, especially when I went to a particular poster presentation, I think it was Philadelphia, I can't remember where we were, but we had quality time during that time to talk about everything. She was not afraid to talk about anything, including God, including faith. And she clearly illustrated that she was a woman of faith through the conversations we had. And so the best way I can close this is in song. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song. If I can show somebody he's been traveling 
wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. No, her living was not in vain. No, her living has not been in vain because she helped somebody as she passed along. I know her living has not been in vain. Bless you. I have to, I have to pause there for a minute so if I start to cry. <laughs> Um, I'd like to welcome our next presenter, um, Peggy Shepard, the co-founder and executive director of We Act for Environmental Justice. Thank you, Crispin, and good afternoon to everyone. You know, as I remember Barbara, I remember her warmth, her smile and her kindness, the generosity, her petite size, and that pixie haircut, which let you know she was a no-nonsense kind of woman. <laughs> but of course, what other kind of woman could set out to work within academia and a medical research enterprise to bring equity, justice, and engagement into that inner sanctum of science and medicine? Barbara had to struggle to open hearts and minds to the reality of the conditions that so many residents are living in. When you think of the haves and the have-nots, she was working in a space of haves at Mount Sinai, which is surrounded by the have-nots and the largest concentration of public housing in New York City. Now, I met Barbara through Dr. Phil Landrigan, now retired, with whom I shared a concern for children's environmental health. And Barbara exerted her charm and force of reason to secure me as an advisor on an important study, Growing Up Healthy in East Harlem. And just the other day, I reread her paper regarding an intervention in East Harlem public housing to ensure better indoor air quality for children and families. She was first author on the paper published in Environmental Health Perspectives called Integrated Pest Management in an Urban Community. And its in conclusion was that it was a successful partnership for prevention. Now, Dr. Brenner understood that the most effective people need to be part of the solution. We all understand certain things, but we don't always take action to address those challenges. What made Barbara a pioneer was her commitment to the difficult task of building meaningful and effective relationships between community leaders, researchers, and physicians to improve the research and the medical care, but importantly, to improve the lives of those living in unbearable conditions and right across the street. Now, the last time I saw Barbara, which does not include the several times she supported my organization's gala, where she bid on a silent auction item personal training sessions by my trainer and friend, Renata Joy. But the last time I went to meet Barbara was to treat her to a birthday dinner with our friend, Renata Joy. We met in Soho at the Dutch restaurant 
where we both had overpriced but delicious fried chicken, some of which made its way home, I suspect, to her husband, Bob. Barbara was in a great mood that night, and why shouldn't she have been? She should have been feeling great, feeling joy about the impact of her accomplishments and the legacy that she has left for her peers to sustain. But she would not want us to be comfortable with the status quo, with what has already been done. She would urge us to challenge ourselves for the public good. Dr. Barbara Brenner was a change agent. She will be missed, but fortunately, she has left us a roadmap. Thank you. And I'd like to welcome Sandra Talavera, um, part of the study of aging in African American Latinas or understanding dementia, salud, community liaison, Fordham University and the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sandra Talavera. I'm a social worker and a resident of East Harlem. I first met Barbara in the late 80s. My mother-in-law was on the board of Linkage House, Petra Allende. And so I had the opportunity of, of meeting Barbara in, in the late 80s. And I worked in and collaborated with her through various New York City and East Harlem organizations. So some of them have been mentioned already, the National Association of Social Workers, Mount Sinai Senior Caring, Linkage House, Little Sisters of the Assumption, the East Harlem Community Health Committee, and the East Harlem uh, Partnership Diabetes Prevention, the 11-year community-based participatory research. During the 90s, when she was president of NASW, she asked me to be part of her executive committee. But I was relatively young in the field, and I was very insecure uh, as a new board member of NASW, and I respectfully declined. I subsequently, subsequently accepted the role, but under another president. And she occasionally, and very diplomatically, always reminded, reminded me of my choice that I had made back then, <laughs> and reassured me that I could have worked with her uh, very well, even though I was very young and inexperienced back then. Throughout the years, I observed and learned of Barbara's commitment and humility in interacting with the East Harlem community her advocacy, her mentorship, her intelligence, her analytical and critical thinking skills, and incredible insights of people and institutions. Anytime I work with her in any of these projects, I was continuously learning from her uh, with all of these uh, skills. She was, needless to say, committed to improving the community's access to health care and quality of life, and she did so in many ways, much of which has been already said. And she certainly knew to engage many of us as volunteers as well, serving a Thanksgiving dinner to Linkage House senior residents and to be part of the community-based participatory research. I remember seeing her work tirelessly next to her Mount Sinai community relations team, interacting with the community with utmost respect and humility at street fairs and special events through Central and East Harlem. But most of all, I remember her as a great listener, an empathetic woman, always asking me about my family and my professional endeavors with keen interest and support. I will also remember her lovely red lipstick and always coordinated with her red nails. <laughs> she, I was honored with her presence and Bob's in our home. We invited her and we did have occasion to go out occasionally. And even after she retired, she occasionally would call me to see how I was doing, to see how my uh, mom who suffers from Alzheimer's was doing. And she always made the time to listen and to make herself available to provide support. I hope that in her memory, Mount Sinai enhances its engagement with our East Harlem schools, youth, with the aim of medical and science development. Partner and support our community-based organizations like Little Sisters in addressing the complexity of social determinants of health 
and support community-based participatory research and continuous con community engagement. I trust that Barbara is in the company of many of our East Harlem pioneers and advocates, such as Petra Allende, Alice Cornegate, Modibo Baker, Carmen Villegas, Sister Suzanne LaChapelle, Nelly Rivera, and Ellen Simon. I miss my friend and colleague. May she rest in peace. And um, so I'm really excited and so grateful that all of the presenters came here today to share all of their experiences. We've all had so many of them throughout the years. I'm just gonna share one brief one because we have a little bit of time for myself. When my husband and my, hu and my father died nine and a half years ago, she came to my house and sat with me. And my mom and I were talking about that just the other day, preparing for this. So I really, I'm so grateful for her mentorship and what she meant to all of us, but personally what she did for me. Um, thank you. Um, I'd like to excitedly invite the New York City Threshold Choir joining us today to sing Remember Me by Catherine Osborne and May Peace Be With You by Annie Garrison, sung by Dorothy Calvani, Liz Stanton, and Deborah Keane. It's a great honor to be here today. Thank you very much for inviting us. I actually knew Barbara um, when I worked at the Little Sisters of the Assumption. I, I am also retired um, from that wonderful organization. <laughs> so it's a great honor and a privilege to offer you these songs, we hope of comfort and um, solace. Yeah. <clears throat> Remember me, remember me, I am the stars in the sky, the eagles that fly, I'm always nearby. Remember me, remember me. I am the waves on the sea, the ancient oak tree, reach out and touch me. I'm in every breath you breathe and the wind blows. I'm in the sunlight dancing on your hair. Remember me, remember me. I am the dark of the night, the moon's silver light, I'm holding you tight. Remember me, remember me. Ooh. Remember me, remember me. I am the stars in the sky, the eagles that fly, I'm always nearby. Remember me, remember me. I am the waves of the sea, the ancient oak tree, reach out and touch me. I'm in every breath you breathe as the wind blows. I'm in the sunlight dancing on your hair. Remember me, remember me. I am the dark of the night, the moon's silver light. I'm holding you tight. Remember me, remember. May peace be with you, peace be with you now, 
May peace be with you always. Peace be with you now and always. May grace be with you. Grace be with you now. May grace be with you always. Grace be with you now and always. May love be with you. Love be with you now. May love be with you always. Love be with you now and always. May peace be with you. Peace May peace be with you always. Peace be with you now and always. I'm Maida Galvez, and I'm um, a pediatrician here at Mount Sinai in environmental medicine. And, and Barbara was a uh, longtime mentor to me, um, and she meant the world to me. And I can't thank you all enough for being here today. <laughs> this is truly a celebration <laughs> of her life. And um, being here is just medicine we all needed. And look at Barbara still bringing us all together. <laughs> it's amazing. And her light lives on in each and one of you. Our CTSA, I wasn't going to do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so hard not to do this. But you all are so wonderful. And it's amazing to be in community with all of you and to see how, um, to witness how Barbara, together with all of you, uplifted community has been one of my career honors is just to be a part of it. Well, now to business. <laughs> Today serves as our promise to center and uplift community in all we do. Our CTSA community collaboration team together with our community engagement team would like to officially announce a call for proposals for community pilot mini grants. We plan to award three New York City community-based organizations at $15,000 each so they can work to build their capacity to respond to community-partnered research proposals and do the good work that Barbara led for so long, together with all of you. The short application can be found on our Mount Sinai Exposomics website, and um, you can see the QR code here. And the deadline is March 3rd. This funding opportunity reflects our commitment to carrying on Barbara's legacy. We look forward to an annual celebration in Barbara's honor in the years to come. And welcome your ideas on how best to celebrate. We also welcome the larger community's input on ways to work together with community partners that centers their leadership and expertise as Barbara did so beautifully for so many years. And the link to share your comments can be found on the second QR code and will be placed in the Zoom chat as well. Um, today, our department will provide our Grand Rounds Honorarium to Little Sisters of the Assumption in Barbara's honor, an East Harlem community-based or organization that has been deeply committed to, that Barbara was deeply committed to, and for which she served as a board member for many years. Um, and donations in Barbara's honor can be sent to Little Sisters of the Assumption Family Health Services. Very special thanks to all our wonderful speakers today. To Bob Rosengard for sharing Barbara with 
all of us for so long. For Reverend Mimsy and the choir who lifted our spirits with song and to the incredible team that I get privileged to work with every day, the CTSA and the P30 community engagement team working to translate research to action together with partners. Um, very special thanks to our Department of Environmental Medicine and Public Health, the leadership who truly made this event possible and just a special round of applause for all of those people, but also for the event organizers who are behind the scenes, um, but do extraordinary work each and every day. Giselle Candelario, Hannah Choi, Alison Divia, Carla Zar, Valeria Menendez Rosas, and Aviad Yitschak Sade. With that, our celebration continues next door. I believe this is her birth month. Is that correct, Bob? So let's have a party. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll be dancing maybe they'll be singing um we hope you can all join us for a community gathering in hess um in seminar room b thank you all so much for being here both in person and virtually and we consider today a call to action to continue the work thank you all